discover that my truth, your truth, that type of thing, it only leads to internal turmoil and division within ourselves. We end up digging and looking for the truth, meaning and hope in ourselves, which pretty quickly dries up. Where I come from in South Kildare, um, our house, it's, it's situated pretty much on a hill, which is the remains also of an old ring fort where St. Lawrence O'Toole, the patron saint of Dublin Diocese, was born. But our house, because it's on a hill, we have very nice views of, say, South Kildare, uh, parts of Leash, and indeed Carlow. But there's a forest kind of surrounds three quarters of our house. And you know, one of the cool things about living beside a forest is the way one can see and indeed explore the um, the trees and the plant life. And, like there's many huge trees in that forest because parts of it are very very old. And now and then, whenever obviously a storm or a strong gust of wind it would come, they would actually blow down one or two of these trees. But it was always interesting to see the ones that blew down. Either they were on their own, away from the rest of the forest, or more often than not the trees that blew down, they grew on rocky ground. Their, their roots couldn't penetrate deep enough into the ground. So no matter how wide the roots were, no matter how wide they covered the area, they still blew down. And today, friends, this weekend, Jesus, he calls himself the true vine. And not just a vine, but the true vine. And I'm sure many of you, you know what vine plants are. They're like the creepers up on the wall in one sense they grow up and they grow out um, like climbers and they spread usually quite fast and like any plant they have the main stem that feeds the branches and blossoms as it goes up and grows and so on now modern men and women today I don't think it's an, uh, an understatement to say that people are itching for the truth what is true what is meaningful and what's stable in their lives. And I think the, the polarization, everybody, and the, the, the unbelievable division that exists in our world, I'm hoping that at some stage, sooner rather than later, it'll begin to wake people up as to discover that my truth, your truth, that type of thing, it only leads to internal turmoil and division within ourselves. We end up digging and looking for the truth, meaning and hope in ourselves, which pretty quickly dries up. And because people today, they're obsessed with kind of going off on their own tangents, creating their own versions of spiritualities, their own versions of Christianity, nitpicking what suits them, what doesn't, indeed from Christ's own words. And you know what, you can see, friends, that when we do that, we inevitably only start tapping into ourselves. And we end up kind of going around in circles. Um, and we don't grow, in other words. A bit like the trees I spoke about earlier on, that grow on rocks and the roots just go all over the place, indeed in amongst themselves. They become pot bound in many respects, and it's no good. Then the first sign of trouble, a crisis of faith even, we bang, we fall over, just like the trees. And I suppose, friends, in a world that really does force, in many, it definitely coerces a lot of people to become self-obsessed, to only look at ourselves only, it's easy to become self-obsessed and not know it, which is quite dangerous. Because I, I would hope it's, it's obvious to anybody paying attention, particularly with the eyes of faith, that to be self-obsessed is dangerous, as eventually we begin to wage war on ourselves. I don't like how I look. I don't like how I feel. In fact, I don't like myself. Those kind of thoughts start, you know, ingraining themselves within us, our hearts and our heads. Because we get frustrated, the pool of water inside us dries up, like I said, very, very quickly. And then what happens? 
often than not, depression begins to set in um, with a depletion of hope, meaning and joy. And some, you know, even stay in bed all day. They don't get out of bed. They wear their loungewear, you know, or else they wear their nightwear all day. Or even some people, they exercise to a painful point. A lack of hope for the future. Scattered in mind, scattered in heart. Look, I'm going to cut right to the chase here, everybody. Jesus is the truth. He is the light, the life, the way. In other words, Jesus Christ is what we all seek in our lives. He's the fulfillment of our craves, our wants, our desires, and calls us always to be better. He's the answer to what we all want, which feeds us to good and fulfilling things. Therefore, everybody, I mean, if our hearts, uh, our lives are not part of Jesus, not with Jesus, join with him, then our hearts are going to be restless and our inner selves are going to be in turmoil. And it's no good, it really is no good, everybody, just to be tapping in and out of religion, tapping in and out of Christianity, tapping in and out of Catholicism, um, or turning, you know, tapping into the faith now and then when it suits me, on my terms. If you or me are, are separated from the true vine, Jesus, we're eventually going to spiritually die, which has a drastic domino effect in a very real world sense. So how can we be sure of keeping tapped into Christ, the true vine? I mean, there has to be some safeguards, doesn't there? Yeah, of course there is. Jesus knew this. Before he ascended to his Father in heaven, he had his disciples around him, those with him each day in and day out. And he gave them authority to go and continue his salvific work, which is the church, the faith community into which and through which Christ gives himself to the world as he promised he would do. So, look, everyone, if you want to be part of the true vine in a, in a very concrete way, no airy-fairy, holy baloney kind of nonsense, there's five ways I think we really need to take on board and to ask ourselves, am I doing this? First, steady immersion in the prayer life of the church, such as devotions, the rosary, etc. Second, steady communion with God, regular moments where you speak to him, each day, at least three times a day, friends, I would um, say it's fundamental to be part of the vine, to, to be stick with Christ, to close with him. You know, that one-to-one -one with the Lord. Three, immersion in the Holy Scriptures, soaking up God's blessed and holy word. And all of it, even the uncomfortable parts that we may not like, soak it all up. Four, engaging in acts of charity, both the poor in this world and the spiritual world, okay? Help the poor in this world through financial or indeed physical means wherever possible. And pray also for those who are spiritually poor in this life and also in the next one. Pray for those who are dead. Five, participate in the sacraments of the Holy Church, particularly confession and the Eucharist, all right? Because look at everybody, it's by the sacraments we stick close to Christ in a very real way. Our flesh, it's mingled with his divine flesh, the Eucharist. In confession, Christ forgives and washes away our sins, soaks up all the darkness in our lives. Friends, that's how we keep our roots constantly tapped into the true vine. Concrete, clear, decisive, no waffle.